Leertijd, vandaag gaan jullie leren over woordorde en stompie. Woordorde en stompie. Woordorde is tot een gouden reel. Die gouden reel is, wat ook al jy mee begin, sal die werkwoord volg. The golden rule is, whatever you start with, the verb will follow. Kom ons leer oor stompie. Woehoe, stompie! Stompie? Hmm, I wonder wel verstaan dit. What does it stand for? Ek wil het. Skryf dat jylle, maak notas, take notes of the following. S is for the subject, die onderwerp. The T stands for time, tijd. The O is for object. Die voorwerp. M hmm, is for manner, die wijze. The P is for place, plek. The I is for infinitive, infinitief. Dankie Trapsiekie, nou weet ons wel voor stompie staan. Thank you, now we know what stompie stands for. The subject, to identify the subject we have to ask, who or what in Afrikaans, wie or what. And if you have a look at this page, I've put columns for each of the letters of Stompy so that we can divide sentences in each of those columns to break it down for you. Remember the golden rule, whatever you start with, the verb will follow. So straight after the subject, we have the verb 1 position. And I've labeled it verb 1 and 2 because you will see that when we have either a hulpwerk word in the sentence, or the tense of the sentence changes, then the original first verb moves to the verb 2 position, which I'll get to just now. So let's go from verb 1 into the time. The time is the second letter of Stompy. If you want to identify the time in a sentence, you have to ask when. In Afrikaans, vanier. The object, you also ask who or what. Who is it being done to or what is being done? In Afrikaans, wie or wat. Then you put the manner in a sentence. You ask how or in Afrikaans, who. For the place, to identify the place, you have to ask where in Afrikaans, waar. Because there is no helping verb or hulpwerk word at the moment, you will put that your first verb to that space once there is one, in the verb to position. Then we get the infinitive. The infinitive gives us more information about the sentence or continues to give us more clarity of why it's being done, almost like a reason. We write in, in English too, so he does this to improve in his work. So there's always more information to follow after the two. In Afrikaans we use om and then te. Let me read the Afrikaans sentence, but before I do that, I want you to really remember that not all sentences have all the areas of Stompy. Your sentences can be as short as a subject, a verb, and an object, and sometimes maybe a subject, a verb, an object, and a manner. So please make sure that you also know the difference between your place, your object, and your place can easily get confused if you don't know your prepositions well. But we'll go into detail about prepositions in future lessons. Let me start with the sentence. The scene is written on the subject. It means in English the boy. Under verb 1 I've written skryf. In English it means write. Under time I wrote dagelijks, which means daily. Object Sy werk, which means his work. Manner, I wrote nekis, which means neatly. And under place is in sy book, in his book. Then there's no verb to because there's no hulpwerk word in this sentence. And then for infinitive, it's om goed te presteer. Now I'm going to take the same sentence and apply it in the columns in past tense, verlede tyd. Die sien 
Then we add the hulpwerkwoord het. Dagelijks sy werk nekies in sy boek geskryf. Remember that your verb always gets replaced of het. It goes to the end and then you add a ge in front of it. But in this case, because this sentence has an infinitive, the infinitive will follow after the verb. So this actual sentence ends at geskryf. It's your normal, um, your normal rule, but it will always go in front of the infinitive. So in front of the word om, if there is an infinitive in the sentence. Let me read the past in sentence altogether. Die sien het dagelijk sy werk nekies in sy boek geskryf om goed te presteer. Let's put the same sentence now in future tense, to kom in die tyd. Die sien sal dagelijk sy werk nekies in sy boek skryf om goed te presteer. Notice that the only things that changed was the tense rule. So the head turned into sal and the geskryf lost the ge. And remember what I told you about the tuck shop rule, that the, the naughty boy head that stood in the line in place of you, that gave you the ge attitude to go to the back, has now been replaced by the teacher's soul, and the scrape lost this attitude, and now is not ge scrape anymore, but only scrape. For those of you who might not have been there when I taught the rule, I will post a future lesson to, get, to, to touch base more on that when we cover our past tense rules in future slides. Die sien sal dagelijk sy waard nekies in sy boek skryf om goed te presteer. Now let's have a look at something a little bit more advanced. When we look at the negative, which is the negative form of a sentence, there is something else you need to remember. Not only with past tense and future tense, there are words that you add on, but there's also now an extra word within the same sentence to make it negative. In English, we know this word as not. It starts with an N. Die sien skryf nie. So where the first nie, the first not goes in English, there's only one not. But in Afrikaans, we put two. One at the beginning of a sentence and then one at the end of the sentence after everything even after your infinitive. That is the rule to now remember stompy as stompen. S-T-O-M-P-I-N because the negative always goes straight to the end. Die sien skryf nie dagelijk sy werk nekies in sy boek om goed te presteer nie. In Afrikaans we get a double negative. Let's move on. Slide. You may start with any other, anything other than the object, provided that you put the verb next. So when you start with the object, you are using the passive voice late in the forum. So be careful of that one, because the golden rule does not apply to the object if you start with the object in the sentence. Let's look at starting with the subject. Die sien skryf dagelik sy werk nekies in sy boek om goed te presteer. When you start with the time, it, it will swap with the subject, but the verb will still follow. Dagelik skryf die sien sy werk nekies in sy boek om goed te presteer. Now let's have a look at when you start with the object. This time, there's extra words you have to add. Sy werk word dagelijks nekies dier die sien in sy boek geskryf om goed te presteer. Now we took the actual object of his word, work, and put it in the beginning. And this is in the passive voice. We have to add the words word and dier in the sentence. In the future I will also go through slides with explaining late in the forum in detail so I'm not going to touch base with that too much because we're now just focusing on the word order. If I now move to the M in the Stompy, if you start with the manner, you will again follow with the verb. Neki skryf die sien dagelik sy werk in sy boek om goed te presteer. Now let's have a look at what it looks like when we start with the place. In sy boek skryf die sien dagelik sy werk nekies om goed te presteer. 
Now lastly, starting with the infinitive. Om goed te presteer, skryf die sien dagelijks sy werk nekies in sy boek. Now that you've gone through that lesson with me, I would like you to use the following sentence to answer two questions. And then you'll have some homework after that. Gebruik die volgende sin om die vraag te beantwoord. The following sentence is what you're going to base your work on. You have to make sure that you answer this work in your book. The sentence is, Die meisie blaas dagelijks haar blokfluit sachies in haar kamer om mooi muziek te maak. That is the whole sentence and it includes all the parts of Stompy, but you have to now break it up into a column just like I did in the previous slide. Nummer 1. Teken a Stompy kolom. Draw a Stompy column in your book, in your book. En skryf die sin oor en rewrite this sentence dier die rechte gedeeltes onder elke letter van Stompy te skryf by writing the correct words underneath the correct column of Stompy. So one column for S, one column for T, but remember to put the verb in between the two. So there will be a column for the S, a column for a verb 1, column for time, column for object, column for manner, a column for place, and then a column for your verb 2 position, and then a column for your infinitive. You're welcome to turn your book in landscape when you do this so that you have more space. Onthou om die werkwoord 1 en 2 bij te voeg. Remember again to add the verb 1 and 2 positions. So I would suggest do this in pencil so that you can rub it out if you accidentally make a mistake. Once you're happy with your headings, you can go and transfer it with pen. Number 2. Now you're going to take the sentence, skryf die sin dan oor, rewrite the sentence in verlede tyd, past tense, toekomende tyd, future tense, en in die negatieve vorm, and in the negative form, just like I did in the example. Your homework will be to take a picture of your work after you've done it, neem a foto van jou werk en handig dit in op Google Classroom. After you've taken a picture, you hand it in in Google Classroom, Onder die hersieningsoefening 5 assignment, underneath the hersieningsoefening 5 assignment that is posted alongside this video. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to see your very nice creative stompy columns. And remember if you have the time, use your colors, be creative and add a little character like I have. Tot ziens klaas, lekker dag!